The Barbie movie hits a billion dollars at the box office, and everybody's talking about Margot Robbie's body. In fact, searches for her diet have exploded by over 1,300% on the internet. Is it good? Does this diet actually work? Well, here's the truth. It's actually not bad at all. There are a couple things you could do to make it even better. This is actually one of the better diets I've seen a celebrity promote. So I didn't get a chance to to dive into it. Um, typically, when you see stuff like this, it's normally trash. But yeah, I discard seen, it right away. Yeah, I don't even look into it anymore when I, you know, what celebrity work out because half the time it's bullshit or it's being promoted by yeah. something else. There's some supplement line they're trying to some push. Some gimmick. Yeah, some gimmick behind it, but it sounds like this wasn't, or at least what you see so far. No, it's all, okay, so essentially this is what it boils down to. Don't eat junk food, okay? You know, that's I not, can get behind that. Yeah, so it's like don't eat heavily processed food. It's a protein targeted diet, so okay. it's high protein. Um, and there's a focus on foods like fish and eggs and, and stuff like that, vegetables, uh, rice, uh, oatmeal. I mean, there's nothing like a reasonable diet. So it, Margot it Robbie <laughs> listens to Mind Pump is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Now here's the one way you can make it better. It works. Yeah. The one way you can make it better is it says. By the way, I want everybody to to know this that when celebrity when celebrity diets come out, it's probably not what they're actually doing all the time. I think yeah. they just get interviewed and then they'll just say like, oh, this is kind of what I did. This is what my trainer told me. Yeah, but on. it says she starts out her day with like blueberries and a fruit smoothie and some juice. Not the best way to start the day. You t you you encourage fluctuations in blood sugar when you do that, and that could cause cravings and energy crashes. Studies will show that starting your day off with protein is much uh, better in regards to like cravings and energy. So that's the only thing that uh, I read according to you know what they said her diet was that I thought could be better. Otherwise. I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. It wasn't that. I bad. mean, was it that yeah. uh, like generic of that, yeah. that? She just says, "Oh, I, I target these foods." She's not weighing and measuring. She wasn't calorie counting or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I like, mean, I'll, this I'll, is just read, the, the I'll read it to you, right? Okay, yeah. So I'll read to you kind of what um, you know what it says in there. It says like breakfast porridge with blueberries, kale, and apple smoothie. That's the one that I think is probably not a great way to start the day. And then lunch is like protein is a priority. So lemon chicken, mackerel, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Dinner, okay. protein and carbohydrates, tuna steaks, sweet potatoes. So nothing really crazy, nothing gimmicky, which I like. Usually, like I, like you were saying, you read, you know, a, a celebrity diet and they're selling something, yeah, or some weird food, and they're going to attribute that to their success. Um, but hers was pretty. I don't know. Maybe they caught her off mm -hmm. guard if they weren't some cayenne that. pepper, uh, you know, cleanse in there somewhere. Yeah. Nothing like <laughs> that. <laughs> Start your day off with lemon juice and pepper. Who did that? Is that, <laughs> so, so, is that Beyonce? Dude, Beyonce. Yeah. Is yeah. that who did that? I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Cause then you, you, some, some wacky ideas. Yeah, your, I think most, most times, <laughs> most times these, these celebrities have some sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're tied back to a, a fit app. They're tied back to a supplement line. They're tied. Back, and so, the whole premise of the workout, the diet, or something like that, is some way to pitch whatever it is that they're they're affiliated with. But it sounds like, from what you're saying, it doesn't really come across that. No, way, right? I mean, I was pleasantly surprised, like because I'm always afraid. Like I have a daughter that's that's a teenager, and so now I'm more on the lookout for this kind of stuff. And you know, if a kid read this, it doesn't have bad information so far. Now I don't know what they're going to release if they're going to change anything, but so far it's not bad advice. I mean, if people just ate. Uh, we've said this on the show a million times. If people ate close to their body weight in grams of protein or their target body weight in grams of protein and avoided heavily processed foods, that's like 90% yeah. of the way there. And most people would get pretty good results. You so know? you've managed to not see it and you have a daughter? That's pretty oh, impressive. She already watched it with uh, uh, her mom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The only reason why. I, you know, I heard it's good, but then I also read that girls are, or girls are breaking up with their boyfriends after watching it <laughs> or like bringing them. To the yeah. I'm re I'm, I've read these tweets and I'm like, what? Why? They're like, if your boyfriend doesn't watch or doesn't like Barbie or understand it, then you need to break up with them. I have no idea what happens in the movie Wow. for them to say that. Okay. Then nobody in here has seen it. Did Bree see it yet? No, she did see it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you have any idea, Andrew? Do you have any insight? She liked the movie, but she, when she was, I asked her about like you know hearing a lot of people were against it and they didn't like it, and then other people were completely other end of the spectrum and they loved it. And she talked about she could see both sides. And for the females in the Barbie, they lived in this world where women ruled the world, so they were everything from judges and lawyers to doctors. Oh. Like they did everything, infrastructure and whatnot. Uh, they didn't okay. need men at all. 
and it was all uh, about female independence and women empowerment and how much they don't need uh, men. Oh. And then there was a male Barbie called Ken. So the Ken was kind of just like, you know, his her toy, right? That she that she lived with. I didn't see the movie, but this is how it was explained to me. And so Ken goes out to the real world, where he sees the men are running the world, it's like or at least you know how we see things. Yeah. And um, so he goes back and he and he goes back into Barbie and tries to do the same thing. He says, in the real world, this is what happens. This isn't how it works in Barbie. He's like, men are supposed to do this and do that, and they take care of this, uh, and they run everything. Oh. Now the I see they, there's a big divide. The way they positioned Ken was they kind of positioned him like like a fool. or like They, they lean into like the, the bro side of it. Like whenever mm. like Ken, the men eventually went into war, and they just look silly. Like They just kind of... Uh, Dramatize or interesting. Know, better word. Now that's smart. Now I know why there's a big that's, divide. In yeah, it. that's yeah. smart. Uh, a smart way to position that movie. Of course, a lot of people are going to watch that. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. like to see Barbie World meets GI Joe. <laughs> <laughs> see what's that? Yeah, stupid. Yes. Yeah, so now remember, see what, how you reconcile with Snake Eyes. You know what? You know when I was a kid, it was always Beachhead. like the girls played with Barbie, right? And then the guys played with GI Joe. Mm -hmm. And did you guys do this? Did you GI Joes always beat the shit out of? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of rip their head off. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. But Ken was always big. He was like this big ass doll, and yeah. GI Joes were this big, but they just whip his ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, originally the GI Joes were even bigger because they were trying to like make it so like boys had any interest in dolls and it was just like it's so hilarious because action figure just yes. that term changed everything did oh, you know yeah. that i didn't know that so that's so, uh, so you must have watched the same documentary i did a while oh ago. the toys that made yes. made us yeah so they saw the, the popularity of of dolls for girls and they yeah. said we need to make one for boys yeah. and they tried and boys are like i don't want to like, play oh, with hell doll. no yeah so they invented the term action figure dude and then they made GI Joe smaller, and they made them be able to like be posed in a different position. Yeah, they can articulate them and grab things and, yeah. and be functional instead of just some like big, you know, dumb doll. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> just the guy. Yeah, he, he was one of those boys that <laughs> yeah, worked out. You know, I don't want a doll. Oh, a doll. I'll take an action figure. Yeah. <laughs> marketing worked on me a hundred percent. I mean, I, I'm so fascinated by human psychology. I think, right. I think that's just so interesting how you can totally shift an entire culture by just changing the name of something. Totally. Yeah. Oh, that's a great point. You yeah. can see how when people try to change words, why people are like, that's not a big deal. It is. It's a very it's, big deal. That's a perfect example of that right there. It's like- We think yeah, in words. It's happening like crazy. Things take shape because of words. Uh, there's even some theories that say that mo like if you didn't understand words, you wouldn't think in the same way. Mm. So scientists will talk about that, which is kind of- My favorite was He-Man, of course. I love- You guys have He-Man? Yeah. He was the best. He, do you remember you used it's to twist them? It's awkward to watch it now. Yeah, as an adult. Oh, but no. I'm talking about the action figures. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you remember you used to be able to twist them and let go and they'd like punch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were cool. They were hilarious. Well, speaking of the power of the words, I have something that I, was, I cannot wait. I couldn't wait to get here today to actually have a, a discussion with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get into it, I definitely, let's do the Organifi commercial because I know that the, is the bundle official yes, now, Yes, dude. So the bundle is official. So yes. it's pure combined with peak performance and that combination is amazing i've yep. been doing it uh and this is why they bundled it because i've been doing it we told drew yeah drew's like oh we got to bundle that uh, and put a discount on it so it is a amazing focused energy blast Cre yeah, i love creative. it for creativity yeah. creativity and euphoria like you take that and you're gonna have a good time for at least yeah it's a great combo it's like three four hours of uh of uh, the the good feelings so, so good thanks to you organifi officially has this bundle now put yeah. together yeah. so it's it's yeah. live okay you, you totally made that happen today's giveaway is oh. maps anabolic here's how you can win Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale on Maps Anabolic Advanced. It's half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Now, to the stuff that I, <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to talk to you guys about because I think that we've, we've gone back and forth. Sal and I have had some heated debates and conversations yeah. off air, on air about Andrew Tate and I'll the first to admit always when I feel like I'm wrong about something right and so not that I think I ever got behind Andrew Tate and said like oh we would be buddies but I've defended some of the things that he said because to be honest 90% of what that man has said I don't disagree yeah. with just being straightforward but I saw for the first time a what would you call it, like a compilation of videos of Andrew Tate talking about the way, and I've, I've, I've never fully understood exactly how he made his millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. 
to get to his own. I had some some idea of it. You know, I know he did some stuff with the webcams, something like that. I know he has kind of like these men mastermind stuff, but I've never really heard him tell the kind of the story of how he did it and exactly how he made the money. I came across this clip and I don't remember, I'll have Andrew make sure the YouTube team uh, gives credit to the this uh, YouTuber that actually put this together. But I thought it was one of the best explanations on who he is as a character and mm -hmm. why now I would I would uh, strongly uh, disagree with the way he's gone about things because he literally is hurting the exact people that he claims to be trying to help so and he's support. representing. Yeah, yeah. So in the clip, so he had a webcam business where girls would talk to guys in bikinis or various states of undress. And the guys would give them money. These businesses exist. Um, they're not great businesses. I think a lot of people realize that they're not the best way to make money, not very moral, whatever. Fine. You can have your judgments, but he was a part of it. But that didn't bother his fans. Uh, it, none of that bothered his fans. Then the people said, oh, you took advantage of the women. None of the women came forward. We know why now. What these women would do is they would get on these webcams and they would pretend to type back to these men. But really who was typing back was Tate and his, his brother. brother. Yeah. And they would type what the girl would, you know, quote unquote, be saying or whatever. And they would manipulate these men into giving them money. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where he kills himself. Because Tate's got this following that seems to be kind of like bulletproof almost, right? He can do no wrong type of deal. But he, this is a, a following made up of young men who f feel like they need leadership. They want to feel stronger. They want to feel empowered. In these videos, he talks and laughs about manipulating these guys yeah. and taking their money and lying to them. And he jokes about it and thinks it's funny. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm taking over. So what I did is I unplugged their keyboards. I plugged a new one in from me behind the screen. So the chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother, and eventually some staff I trained, would do all the talking. The girls would sit there fully clothed or a bikini. The girls were just pure, just famoosers just laughing and doing this, the titties out. One, I intimately understand the relationship between men and these websites. And they were talking to fucking ice cold hustlers. We were taking their money, all of it. I've had and seen men give away their life savings to girls they'd never met. I've watched and I've seen it. If they they come and say, <laughs> what kind of, bro, all of it. We are fucking milking them dry. And I actually think a lot of the insights I give. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. A lot of the things I tell the world about the male men, mental health crisis. You'd have you have a guy. feel bad or no? Fuck no. To give a solitary fuck. About men being so constantly lonely. We got to the point where we had these guys falling in love with my models. Serious, big time in love, right? Sending crazy money. And they were convinced they were going to meet the chick. This is almost where I kind of felt bad. About how important it is to build yourself into a high value man. Because they were like, can we meet? I've sent you $200,000. Can we meet? Can we meet? Can oh, we meet? But how money alone is not enough. The what was is, the most that one person sent to a model? Total. Maybe million? Wow. Wow. About a mil in about a year? You don't feel bad at all. Why the fuck would I yeah, care? I don't feel bad either. So to your point, Adam, uh, I don't know how he's going to survive that. It's him literally saying, you idiots, you know, I'll take it. I'll take all your money. I'll milk you, you know, from all your, all your cash. You're, you know, basically... The very people he says that he, you know, that need help, that need leadership, you know, we need more masculinity, we need whatever. These poor guys are being taken advantage of. He's doing that. Well, it needed, and he admits it. I needed to see that too. And it's good that they got clips of him literally saying that. So it was like, it's not, um, you know, somebody speculating that this is might have been what he was doing or he was literally coming out clean of like this. These are the methods I was applying uh, towards these men. And like I was, and he was joking about it. Like I was able to like get all this money from this guy, like, and, and basically tell, uh, the story that, uh, you know, uh, one of the girls needed to, to get out of the country and was going to the embassy and, Lying. and just, yeah. just pure lies, just a pure con, like yep. literally a con. And so if, if you look at that, just from a, uh, you know, about their character, about their more morality in general, you know, you have to really question then later on, like what, what um, they're actually saying that's that's um, true and authentic versus like what they're just wanting you to hear. Yeah, the, that's a good point. The most interesting thing about all of this to me is that 
it's crazy where the divide is on him, right? And there's a lot of people that were in my DMs that were talking shit to me, like that I defend Andrew Tate and he is this, you know, uh, human trafficker, pimp, all this. And I'm like, th these people are arguing the wrong way about Andrew Tate. Because here's the deal. I bet you he gets, and I'll remember I said that he's not going to get charged with any of this stuff. He's going to get away with all of it. The main thing that they're coming there's after him. Willing, agree, uh, agreeing yeah, people that's why, that involved. That's why there's yeah. no girls coming out. Can, can you not see how this all unfolded? You have a couple of very attractive girlfriends of yours who are probably already doing OnlyFans since there's a huge percentage of young girls that are yeah. utilizing this as a tool, probably not making very much money. And he goes, come here, let me show he you. Turbo charges your business. Yeah, and turbo charges your business. You make more money than you were ever making yourself. That's the reason why none of these girls feel like they were taken advantage of is because they, and, and that's why this is, this whole case is going to get thrown out and he's not in control, but that you guys are making the wrong argument about him. That's not the right argument because it's not the true one. It's what, what is true. And he said it himself is that he is taking advantage of these young men, the same young men yeah. that he has built his entire business around trying to prop up and say, I'm here to lead you and help you and support you. Right. So that's the part that I think is, you know, the coup de gras with him and his business. Now there is a percentage of people, Sal, that, and, and I, why he won't go away. Yeah, there's going to be the, the douchebag alpha guys. Yeah. You, well, you took advantage of those betas cause that's what we're supposed to do. Right. And, yeah, I know. So here's the, I'm, I, I don't think you should make that statement. Here's why he, he's obviously a liar. He's obviously a liar. Yeah. The information that you're quoting right now about nobody coming forward came from his mouth. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It's only what he said. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. And I'll, now, I'll take that. Here's the stance I've always taken about, uh, with Andrew Tate. A lot of the stuff he says is true. I don't like him. And there was, I couldn't necessarily put my we finger on it. Couldn't figure it out because we didn't have enough context. He's not the kind of guy I'd want my, my kid to follow. He doesn't seem like a good guy. And mm. now it's very clear that he has the dark, what they call the dark triad of personality uh, traits, the, the personality dysfunctional traits. He's narcissist, cl classic extreme narcissist. Yeah. He believes yeah. he is better and smarter, and he'll say this. And he lacks empathy. He's he's Machiavellian, meaning he's very manipulative. He schemes and plans. He also admits this. Right, 3D chess player. Guy. And he's also a psychopath, zero empathy, does not care, and he also talks about not caring. Yeah, Those kind of people can get very far in society because yeah. they tend to be charismatic, they tend to use truth. This is what he did. He did say things that were true, and that's how he grabs you. Yeah. Then his charisma pulls you in. Then if you're susceptible to that because you don't have a good father figure, you maybe feel like you're beat down, you, you know, girls are turning you down, whatever, you're like, this guy seems strong. He mm -hmm. seems confident. I want to follow this guy. And then you believe all the bullshit that he says. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where I'm going to not defend him, but where I'm going to talk to the young men right now who follow him. Here's the, here's the big problem. This is with any celebrity or anybody who's got any pull or even us, okay? Even us, if you listen to us, nobody's an angel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not worship celebrities. You could take things that people say that are true and that work for you, find out that that person's a piece of crap, but still realize that the statement or thing that they said was true. Because what I'm afraid of is a lot of young men who felt like he helped them are going to see him talk about how he manipulated other right, men. Right, the opposite direction. And now they're going to be like, oh, all that stuff is garbage. No, no, no. What he said about working out, what he said about picking yourself up, what he said about working hard, what he said about standing you know, tall, like all those are true. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because the guy that you idolized turned out to be a piece of crap. Most people are in yeah. some way, flawed. shape, or form yeah. totally flawed. This is for he's sure very a dark flawed. side to, to his message. Yeah, he's no, very flawed. I think that's a great way to say it because that's, and from the very beginning, that was, and people thought that I was defending him and his character. I'm like, I don't know, like, like many people that we've talked about before, I don't know their character. I don't know who yeah. they are as a person. But what I would defend was a lot of the things he was saying. I, I agree. I, and I still agree with a lot of these. It doesn't right. mean that I can separate the two. I you can know how say, hard that is for people? I, I, I don't know why that is. It's so funny. But I mean, it makes sense. It's the reason why we play identity politics, right? Yep. Instead yep. of actually going after people's policies and what do they do for the country, it's like, let me go tack their character and then get to convince them that they're a, a bad president, a bad person because they had they did this or that. It's like you can do both. You can yeah. have you can have somebody who says a lot of the right smart things, and at the same time, them not a good person. Yeah, you know? it's because we well, of course, there's extremes that would apply. Like you you wouldn't want to find out somebody was like a murderer or something like that. Like that would change everything. But it's because largely we want gods to worship. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you don't worship actively worship 
a the a per, the perfect uh, thing, which would be a god, which would be god, right? Perfect. Then you'll inevitably end up worshiping people or something else, and you'll end up play, it, you'll you'll idolize them. Literally, you'll idolize them, yeah. and this is what you see: celebrities become idolized where they could do no wrong, like. Somebody who, you know, uh, sings really well or makes amazing music. Then you hear bad news about him. You don't want to believe it. Like people had a tough time believing Bill Cosby did mm -hmm. what he did or Michael Jackson did what he did. Yeah. Why? Because Bill Cosby's funny. Yeah. He's a great actor. The halo effect. You know? Yeah. The, the truth is that, by the way, there's a bit of a self-selection bias with famous people. Yeah. If that, you want to find- want to be famous, right? If you want to find a greater percentage of- uh, Machiavellian uh, tendencies, narcissistic tendencies, and psychopathic tendencies look no further than famous people, whether it be polit politicians or celebrities. People who seek well, that. Especially actors. I mean, yes. they're, they're portraying a different person. They're not even like... They're good at it. Authentically being themselves. They're Yeah, they're very good at it. And they're, they're very good at winning you over because that's yeah. their entire way they get business is to be able to win over these directors and these casting people. Well, look how good Tate did. I mean, the fact that he was able to go on countless podcasts that disagreed with him, Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens. I mean... He's had, uh, what's his face from the UK that's a, like a hard interviewer. Yeah. I mean, he's done a lot of these interviews where, you know, and I think where people went wrong was, again, I think we, we they were trying to pin something on him that either one hasn't been proven yet or can't be proved potentially or isn't true uh, versus I think the, the, the total flaw in this whole thing is that like, man, you, your whole mission, you claim that you're like chosen to go help young men and that they need that so bad. Yet at the same time, you're taking advantage of them. Yeah. That's not a hard, it's crazy. It's not a, that's, a, a that's, stretch to think that he's still doing it. That's I mean, the that's, point. That's, that's a cult leader's MO, you yes. know, like a hundred percent, you win them over and you get, you tell, it's always like uh, wrapped in with truth. Like, yes. And you have to, you have to lead with the truth first in order to like pull them in and win them over. And then, you know, it just inevitably starts to go into that, uh, you know, that behavioral pattern of like, I know <sighs> everything and everybody's following me. So now I can really, you know, ramp this up and get them to do things that I, I also, yeah, want I, myself. I, I felt it. I mean, just watching his video, the bravado, that's what I kept saying in the past podcast. It was just bravado. Like he could say the exact same thing sometimes, maybe a little differently, but the exact same thing is, is someone out like Jordan Peterson. Sometimes the messages actually sound similar. Not always, obviously, but sometimes it sounds similar, but it was the bravado. And like, if I met him on the street and he talked to me, like, yeah, I like kind of what you're saying, but I don't like you. There's something about you I don't like. And that's what I kept, you know, yeah. that's what I, I kept pointing to. It Can't was like, really shake it. Like, yeah. What like is it? The, 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 the litmus test to me would be like, would you want your kid having that person as a real life mentor, not just on the internet? And I'd probably be like, no, I don't want him hanging yeah. around with this dude. Right. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's a hundred percent that narcissistic Machiavellian psychopath. The unfortunate part, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine. I shared that same video with him because again, uh, uh, it, it is my style if I if I felt like I was, especially since you and I got into it about him multiple times. I mean, you had a better judge of his character than I did, plain and simple. Um, we both agree that we agree a lot what he said. Uh, I gave him more latitude or potential belief that, oh, maybe he's not as bad of a guy. Let's see what he looks like if we were to meet him in person. Um, but, I mean, to me, it's clear as day. It's I've seen enough now and understand how he makes his money uh, clearly that that, and that to me, that's it. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get caught up in all the other stuff yeah. that, uh, that people are talking about, but I was talking to my buddy about this and he's like, you know, that's why we have people like Jordan Peterson. I said, yeah, but the unfortunate part is that Jordan Peterson is, is attracts an intellect. It attracts a, sure. a older, more mature, wiser, well-read man. And there is a huge, amount of young boys that are uh, starving for good leadership and, mm -hmm. and good information. And unfortunately, that's where he capitalized. Yeah, He capitalized on the 15 to 25 year old young man that, that agreed with a lot of what he was saying. And then because of that, automatic, automatically attached that this is a good leader, this is a good person to, to follow. And I feel like we need that. You know, we need somebody for that demographic. No, this is just takes a shot, right? It just knocks down these men, these young men. Like they don't want to follow any. This is what happens in the fitness space often is that because they're insecure, right? When you're insecure, it's easy to be manipulated. And what happens in the fitness space is people's in, someone's insecure about their weight. They follow this fad 
or this, they take this pill doesn't work for them. Eventually they just give up. Yeah. So what I'm, what, what hurts me about this is I wonder if there's like, there's young men who follow him, who this is their last chance. This is the last time they're going to try. Then they find this out. Their hero falls. They never try again. And there's a percentage of people that might oh, do that. Oh, yeah. I and know. that I, makes me, that, that, that really I was trying to sad. imagine if, uh, you know, like the difference of like our, our character, right. As, as, uh, as men, like how we differ from someone that like, what, what, what would we have to do in our space to be to put it, be put in that category? Like I was thinking like we would have to sell the health and fitness message as hard as we do while simultaneously selling people some sort of a supplement or pill that intentionally makes them sicker and, yeah. and fatter. Yeah. Right. Like that's literally like the same thing. Like it would be like our, our message or making fun of making people. Fun and then, of people no. And then, then in addition to that, yeah. then in addition to that bragging when we go places like, Oh yeah, we've made yeah. millions off of this supplement yeah. we give. Yeah. And it actually makes all these, these, these people yeah. fatter and sicker and stuff like that. And then on our podcast, we talk all about the importance of health and fitness. Just hypocrisy. And, well, yeah. It's like, that's, and I honestly think that's worth than all worse than a lot of the accusations that he's being hit with. Sure. And that's where people are going wrong here is they're going after all these other rumors or other things that have been tied to him. It's like, you don't even need, why waste time talking about that? Literally talk about what the man is admitting yeah. that he's already came out and said that he did. That's the argument. Yeah, I want to I want to back up too to what you said about like uh, judging character. I, you know, that reminds me of something I think that's real important that I think every, this is true for everybody. It's really important that you have good friends that you trust mm -hmm. because- you're going to miss something. They're going to pick up and vice versa. So I tend to be more judgy than you. That works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I will think someone's a particular way. You tend to reserve judgment and it turns out that you were right. And that means that together uh, we're able to move a little further because I trust you. you know, I trust Justin uh, the same way and Doug. So it's important to have those friends because you will miss certain things. Like you're going to, you're going to miss. And I guarantee you that my opinion, as much as we debated, probably had you pause a little bit as well, just like yours does. You know, no, nobody's me. batting a thousand. That's impossible. No. no. I, and, you, and I think the thing that's uh, to add to that, that I think is so important, what I love about you guys is, and I know about you guys, even though sometimes we get comments that, you know, people, the, the irony that, that, that people thought that like I was really defending Andrew <laughs> Tate or like, I thought like, I'm not like a follower of this guy at all. It's just like, I, I've seen clips. I've heard the, the controversy back and forth. So I've watched some things and I like a lot of what he said. Like, I still stand behind that. But this idea that you, like, people get so attached to a character, that's, that's not even who I am. I don't care. I don't, even Jordan Peterson, I love Jordan Peterson as a, like what he has to say, but I don't idolize the guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't, no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go defend him to the T. And I love that we all have that ability to be able to, look at someone, what they're saying, go back and forth. Oh, I like him. Oh, I don't like him. And be able to have this conversation. Meanwhile, I'm not so, uh, you know, I'm not so sucked in by it that I can't find something like that, that, oh, now I see it. Yeah. I'll now tell you the make, last, now it makes sense. The last time that happened to me, kind of. So Arnold Schwarzenegger is always somebody that I looked up to mm -hmm. in the sense that he was an immigrant. Mm -hmm. He's built businesses. He's accomplished things that he said he was going to yada, yada, yada. Right. So as a kid, I followed him. And then remember during the pandemic, he did that video, fuck your freedoms or whatever. Yeah, yeah. My heart was like crushed. Oh, like, oh, I know. I come on, not, Arnold. I couldn't believe it. But then like, you know. Didn't want to believe it. Yeah, man. I know. You're but right. then a week yeah. later, I'm like, why am I idolizing? Of course, you know, yeah. he's got his opinions. That doesn't take anything away from all the other stuff that he's done. Sure. And if I met the guy and we hung out, I would tell him. They're like, hey, I liked all this other stuff, but that thing yeah. he said was stupid. And then I'm sure it'd be fine. Maybe that was not. a dumb thing he said. Yeah. And then so then you move on. Idolizing people, you're gonna they're it's they're gonna let you down. There yeah. isn't a single human on earth that won't let you down if you idolize them. It's just a hundred percent left. of the time too. One hundred everybody. <laughs> not sometimes, not most like a hundred percent of the time. At one point they will. It's just it. At one 100%. point they they won't live up to yeah. that. Hey, I did listen to um the uh, PBD and Joe Rogan episode. Oh, oh you listen to the whole thing? Yes, I, I, I got about halfway through. I that. never listened to a full yeah. Joe Rogan. I always say, like, that one got me. I was interested in the conversation. You know what was good about that is it was like they were interviewing each other. I know. Yeah. I yeah. love PBD. He's dude. good I really about do that. Like, again, interview Joe. Okay, here, see, I, you have to be careful. I say I love PBD. I don't fucking know the man. I haven't hung out with the guy. <laughs> I don't know if he's a good father. He yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> could be a terrible person. Like, you know, it's like, just because I say something like that, it's like- You love his content. I do. I yeah, love yeah. the content he puts out. I love a lot of things that he talks about. I love Patrick Bet. David, correct, because nobody knows who what PBD, PBD is. I think a lot of people know who PBD is. Not everybody. Is. Yeah, you're right. Peanut butter dessert. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, like that. 
He has a great book too that I think I've talked about oh, on the show before. Your next five moves that I think is an excellent read. So I think. But that podcast was good, boy. Rogan, he got Rogan to really because uh, one thing sometimes Joe Rogan does is he waffles a little bit. Yes, like he's not, he won't like a hundred percent say he's where he calculated stands on certain he's, things. And he's he, yeah he's holding his cards a lot of times, and so you don't get a lot of like his real opinions to come out uh, because he wants his guests to really. And be I able thought to, Patrick did that. Yeah. He did. Yeah. So he basically, I mean, there was Rogan, a couple times where Patrick's like, it's Joe Rogan's show. Yeah. And Patrick was like, so let me ask you this. Yeah. And, then, and then he was giving him scenarios. <laughs> like, I, who's I, interviewing I here? I would say, so Rogan went, I mean, he went hard. He went hard on the, the COVID vaccine. Then they talked about politics. He would, I guess he would qualify. What's the euphemism? euphemism uh, red pilled mm -hmm. is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. How he talked about how Trump did these good things. Doesn't like the guy, but he did these good things. If he had to choose between him and Biden, I would vote Trump. And, I, I haven't yet seen the backlash or what's going to happen, you know, from him saying that, but I can only imagine he's going to be public enemy number one. Did for you, the big do, media. You, do you think, so after listening to that, uh, I sent a text to you, like, do you think he's going to get Trump on the show? Oh, I think God, he is. that would break the internet. Dude. I think he's doing He it. might. I mean, I hope. I'm sure he's been kicking that idea around quite a bit. And plus, they met at that one UFC event, right? Yeah. And so it's like, I'm sure that's been on his mind quite a bit. Like, so when, when does it, the timing of it make sense? So here's the, the great question because a lot of people are like, why didn't you just do it? As much as it could help Trump, it could hurt him, depending on what he says. Mm hmm. Trump right now is leading so far in the primaries. He's so far ahead of all of his competitors for becoming the nominee that it's smarter for him not to say anything. He's not even going to do the debates. Yeah, right? it's like your fight. It's like you're in a boxing match. It's the twelfth round. You've knocked down your opponent every single round leading yeah, up yeah. to this one. You're not going to go to just not, play defense. You're just right going to play. Yeah, you're just going to run run away and stand around because you won. Right. That's yeah. a smart smart way to fight there. Trump's so far ahead that if he says anything, the likelihood that it'll hurt him is higher than it'll help him. And he doesn't need any help right now. In fact, he alluded to not doing debates for the primaries, which is very smart. He said, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't wait. I look forward to watching these guys debate to see who's going to be my She's VP. Me your vice president. Yeah. Which is actually a smart thing to say because yes, it is. everybody's so far behind. What he might get the people to do is to not attack him in the primaries when they're debating each other. Cause like, we're not going to win. So the uh, best thing I could do is try and get on his good side and set up to be a VP. I mean, that's actually smart. Is he still politics. indicted right now? Like, is he still yeah, going but, through the court? Yeah, but nothing he got charged with the uh, third time, right? Yeah. But nothing he got charged with would prevent him from running. It wasn't, and none of the stuff was, um, I, I don't remember. There was one charge that they didn't do. That would be the one that would prevent him know. from. I just find it interesting that um, a lot of the propaganda leading into like the Russian collusion, all this was proven not true. People still hold on to that. Like, Listen, there, it's clear. It's, I don't care what your thoughts to me. are. If you what like, you're saying is you don't trust the justice system. No. Is what you're saying to me. Listen, you, you, I don't care if you like him, don't like him, whatever. It doesn't matter. One hundred percent. The this is be this is a political uh, witch hunt. Again, it's yeah, clear. It's moves, yeah. There are Democrats that are saying it. What I can't get, what I can't wrap it. my brain around though is if it's a smart strategy or not. It's the hail mary strategy that they have. You know, how, what in a bad position the Democrats are in right now. They either have Biden run, which if he decides to run, he will. He can. He's the guy, and he's clearly in some pretty bad stages of dementia. Clearly, yeah. clearly, uh, his favorability is dropping. A lot of people are blaming the Democrats for the pandemic response and stuff like that. Uh, they have no, with him, it's bad. And then if he steps down, which it looks like some people in the Democrat party are trying to get him to do, then you'll have someone like Gavin Newsom. Um, so I think their best bet is to go against the guy they know that they've beat before and they kind of have the script, which is mm -hmm. Trump. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens because it's... Yeah, it's going to be real interesting leading up like what they what they pull out because, I mean, it, yeah, all they have is like a, a Newsom is like their sort of dark horse. They're going to see if they can Please bring him in. Please don't elect like, him. Dude, if anybody... All you got to do is look at, look at California. California. Just That's it. it. Yeah. Like, Terrible. Just, just look isn't at it what's obvious so here. that he's going to be... Isn't, isn't he's, it pretty obvious what like the moves and things that he's doing or he's kind of like quietly campaigning right now? He's their next golden boy for sure. <laughs> He's their next golden boy. He's got the looks. He's got the talk. Yeah. Uh, he's got the pedigree. Just, just make irrelevant points and and <sighs> yeah, do nothing of uh, substance. Yeah, but God, I, isn't RFK? Uh, doesn't he? Isn't he under the RFK? Is so. Against. I love what he's doing. <laughs> he's so against he's, the he's, narrative. He's, but he's Democrat, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's running. If they the run Democrat a primary, party. he would be able to run. 
Uh, but I do not see. Oh, sorry. They only run a primary if Joe decides not to to, to yeah. elect to go again. Yeah, then I they see. run the primary. Yeah. Okay. Or, what, what, here, okay, so here's some other speculation that Biden steps down temporarily, making Kamala the president, and then they have to primary, which would make Kamala the first female president. Now, just think about how just angry. For a second. Think about how angry Hillary. Uh, well, given that, that happened. Oh, 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 oh yeah. you know how mad she would get. <laughs> sure. She was supposed to be the first female. <laughs> she first was, day. yeah. Ah! And then Kamala gets it of all people. Oh, <laughs> God, dude. I know. That was so funny. I, when, I mean, we're coming right real, in the next month or two, right? It really should start heating up, no? It's going to start heating up, yeah. Pretty good. It's already, we're already starting to get into the. They spend so much money, dude. They're already pulling our content. What the fuck? <sighs> Can you believe that? I know. What yeah. the hell? The sensor machines are back. back Our up. video that said that men are weak, why men are weak today, which we're talking about the things affecting young men. It was a clip that got pulled off of Instagram for what was it? Hate speech. Hate speech. Hate speech. Because we said um, why men are weak. Men today are weak. Here's the six reasons why. Pornography. I mean, anything could be porn. Substance abuse. The chronic use that can then reset really our dopamine threshold. Lack of physical strength. Video games. No good role models. and loneliness. Those are the six reasons why men today are not like they used to be. That's, That's crazy. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. I Well, so. Yes, it is. No, I know that. I know that. But I'm saying it's uh it's because people reported it right and then that's oh, what gets a oh, pulled yeah. i don't I mean, think someone instagram that. yeah that's, i mean that's the thing is that's it's it's really sure silly how like i mean you know me yeah, i'm the one who dudes. always kind of calms us down yeah. about like calm down like the government's not coming after us nobody's trying to <laughs> shut us down okay calm down literally the way it works Turn off your cameras. It's, it's, it's an off algorithm. <laughs> Obviously, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all these things are massive. They do not have the time to go around and pick no. every little podcast and everything that they say that isn't aligned with them. But what they do is all it takes is 30 Karens. You know, I'm 30 is just a just no, this is made up number. Darren's. These are probably Darren's. Yeah, Darren's. Karens or Darren's yeah. that are offended by the content to report it. And that's enough to trigger the yeah. automatic pull and warning that gets sent out. So. Yeah. I mean, that's just that obviously that clip. I mean, what a weird, what a weird place to be in as a content creator where, you know, these are the things that need to be talked about. These are the things that need to be said. Um, mm -hmm. You know that you don't want to waffle around like you were saying Joe is doing you. You want like if you know, I firmly believe if you don't stand for anything. You'll fall for anything. So, hey, this is what I believe. I believe this is an important message. Let's say it. Let's tell people. But then you have this. You know, weird. Like, oh, if I do that though, then I'm gonna probably gonna pull it. We have such a we have a large enough following now that it's not hard to piss thirty Karens off with any piece of content. And so, unless we stay so neutral that all we talk about is exercise and we don't talk about anything else, it's like, okay, that's the only way that we don't get stuff. It's pulled. sad because that's a health that's a health issue. The stuff yeah. that we listed on there was backed by data. Men are being affected disproportionately by the things that we listed. Yep. And it's growing and getting worse. And men are weaker today than they were before. Yes. Fact. Like these are all facts. Yes. <laughs> so and, and and a lot of guys, you know, need to they need to hear this because they might not be aware right. of what's happening, what they're doing to themselves. Um, you know, with some of the things that we talked about. So it's it's whatever. We'll see. But I mean, we talked to somebody about this and who who does this for a living, and they said that larger accounts there's something you can set up that will help protect against that because lots of large accounts will have groups of people try to shut them down if they disagree, you know, with you. I mean, look, I, if, I imagine what we're basically paying for is for that, you know, 
you know, auto algorithm to be stopped. And then if we get, or if we get flagged, then they have to manually go in and check and for check themselves. It, yeah. And then as long as it passes and they're yeah. like, oh, I mean, it's God, if Lane Norton has got kicked off by now, you know, that yeah. guy pisses everybody off half the time. <laughs> yeah, he he, so he's, I know he's dealt with. He stuff. has. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, he's, 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 he had his stuff it. pulled before for the same reason. I'm sure I know, for I just know. rubbing people the wrong way. Yeah. All right. Speaking of uh, rubbing things the wrong way and crazy shit. <laughs> what is that video that you showed me? Someone used AI. Oh yeah. And made me promote a, a product to, to, that we don't promote. To, you? To, to yes. Just, to to, to Turkestone or to How whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, Ectisterone. That's Ectisterone. One. Yeah, I sent it to Doug. Actually, uh, like a somebody sent it. Correct. Yes. Somebody, yes. What somebody, the hell? Somebody sent it to me, and I sent it to Doug. Half one to give Doug a heads up that someone was doing this. Bro, so he Doug could, gets so mad. I know. That, he get, that's why I sent it to him yeah, and not everybody mad. else. I sent it to him to, to get on it right away, which I knew he would. Also, though, like, hey- Good job editing here. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I mean, wasn't a clip of you actually mentioning ectosterone? Oh yeah, you've mentioned it before a long time ago when yeah. he talked. So they string it together. Uh, with, yeah, and then they then they maybe say stuff that I didn't actually say, wow. like promoting their product with your voice or like with your Me. video and your everything. face, everything, everything. What? Yes. I don't think they say your. You say their product name. I don't. Oh, no. Yes. Yes, he does. Yeah, do. Oh, he does. He, he says he's... the name of the product. He says it's great, and then he says this is where you get it. Oh wow, yeah. bro! Oh wow, that is that's so good. Yeah, so good, oh, wow. so, so good, but so dishonest. Yeah. Super dishonest, you disgusting go. company. Even though you have flattered me with the fact that I they're can a sell German so company. Well. Uh, I <laughs> I'm mean, like, oh, I'm such a good salesperson. People are using so me to such, sell their stupid so, shit. So what's so what's such bullshit about this game? That's I mean, crazy. it reminds me of the old supplement game of like you 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 put stuff that you know is a, a steroid on it because it, but it hasn't been put on the list yet, right? You just get a slap on the yeah. wrist. Like that's the only thing that's going to happen. Like, who knows how long that ad has been running? But nobody how- can keep up with this. If AI, there are AI apps right now that you could do, and people could do this a million times. How are you going to stop them all? Yeah. Look, at, here's the deal. If you want to know if we legitimately support a product, go to mindpumppartners.com. Only the partners that we have are yeah, listed yeah. there. Yep. That's how you know if it was a real. So if you listen to the show and you heard that clip, You'd be like, that's interesting. I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, would he say it that way? Look, go to Mind Pump Partners and see. By the I, way, ectosterone. You said that. Yeah, ectosterone does have some potential benefits. I wouldn't rec- recommend to everyone, and I don't have a company yeah. that I would promote it with because I haven't found one yet that's legit. In fact, a lot of fake stuff out there, and I don't know this company. But if they went out of their way to use me uh, and use AI to make me say that their stuff is good, then they're probably full of crap. Uh, so I wouldn't yeah. buy I wouldn't buy their stuff. So the in fact, other- I, I heard that their stuff, their pills have monkeypox in it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so you probably don't want to get monkeypox. I mean, wasn't the last time this happened, Adam had like his uh picture of when you were competing and it was like blown up to this <laughs> oh, huge yeah. poster somewhere, somewhere in like Kuwait or yeah, something. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean, uh, we live in this weird time like that, man, where that's going to happen bro, more how dis- and more How and more. disturbing. I didn't realize that they actually used his voice to say their brand. Wow. Yeah, they hey, did. How disturbing. That's nuts. There's females, there are female actresses and people who will get their, they'll deep fake them and then make them do porn and shit. How disturbing would that be if mm-hmm. someone sent you a video and it was you doing some shit, <laughs> some, some yeah. sexual shit that you would never, it wasn't you. Like how disturbing oh. to see that. You know what I mean? Hundred percent already. That's my alibi. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my go-to, dude. Yeah, yeah. Honey, that's, well, that's AI. Me. It's AI. AI. Man, they got crazy, the detail, isn't it? <laughs> they got it the really detail. looks like my freckle. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. How yeah. did they know you had a mole there? That was weird. Like the... I don't know. AI is very predictive. <laughs> 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 it's super intelligent. I don't understand. Let's go. <laughs> don't believe anything you see. I know. Dude. Did you so. guys? Uh, did either of you guys watch the uh, Jake Paul fight at all? No. Uh, no yeah. Just some clips. So he won by decision. Yeah, I went to decision. It was actually a good fight. Yeah, I mean, how much does he outweigh? What's his name by? Is is it? But does he outweigh him by a lot? No, they weighed in. They weighed in. Yeah, it was weighing everything. It's tall and and uh, filled out. So yeah, I thought the these boxing matches. I think that they they have they they still have weights that they have to come in. They do. It's not it's not considered. Yeah, when they get in there and box, like I don't know. I can't speak to all his fights he's done because I know exhibition. They don't. It doesn't matter what your weight is. Yeah, these are, these are huh? 185. They and both I, came in at 185. Wow. Yeah. yeah, these are considered these are considered pro fights. So they're sanctioned and everything. I mean, yeah, the, and they and they go on the record of whether he's wow. a yeah. So 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 you watched the fight? Was he? So I've watched most of his fights now. I, I didn't watch like the very first one when he did the ones like go uh, with KSI, like the original ones. But I've I've followed his journey. I'm just curious, right? So and I know I'm like I'm not like I don't think he's like this amazing. But I tell you what, man, um, he's a good boxer. 
He's getting better and better. I mean, the and he he, he looks he, like he's just been improving quite a bit. He is. He, he he's a good athlete. Yeah, and and I really think that this is the the future of what we're uh, going to see in like uh, mixed martial arts. I even think that he is going to disrupt. Uh, and like, did you guys happen to watch his documentary yet? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you it did. Great, I did watch it. Yeah. So okay, how fascinating is his part? His the business partner, partner that came from UFC, right? He and was the CFO. He, he sought him out. The uh, CFO of UFC. I forget the guy's name, Nikista or something like that. He is partners with Jake Paul in building their own promotion, fight uh, fight company. He, he looked at him as the ultimate marketing mouthpiece, you know, the, the one that like could really not just also be a boxer and be in it, but then also like promote the hell out of it. And all he has to do is like, you know, what he did for the UFC anyway uh, with him to disrupt the whole game completely. Yeah. And I, these guys aren't just trying to disrupt boxing. They're trying to disrupt MMA too. It's uh, Nakisa Bedarian. Yes. Now are they, so I'm sure they're setting up an MMA fight now. So he offered him $10 million. So, so I think he, I mean, he'll lose on the ground for sure. That's a, that's a world-class jiu-jitsu guy. Oh yeah. I mean, actually dude, Diaz, Gave a run for his money boxing. Well, he's yeah. a pro fighter. I mean, he's yeah. just had a few boxing matches. So what right? made the yeah. fun, the fight kind of fun to watch? So the first couple rounds, spoiler alert, I'm going to share how this thing goes down, but I don't, it's already over, right? Yeah, it's over. So the first couple rounds, Jake comes out and looks more dominant as the the well-rounded boxer. Mm -hmm. like and, and Nate looks like he's just, you know, goofing around like he does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. messing he with him. Messing with <laughs> but as the place. rounds go on. It gets deeper into round six, seven, and eight. You start to see Jake start to tire out a little bit. And I tell you what, Diaz has just got a gas tank. Oh, those guys are crazy. And take a beating. You know, dude. they yeah. compete in triathlons Forever. for fun. Yeah. yeah. They're and, just so crazy. And he, could, I really think if it went 12 rounds, it would have been way closer. It was very obvious that, that uh, Jake Paul won the fight. How many because, rounds did it go? It went to 10. Okay. And by the way, it was supposed to be eight, and Diaz's camp fought for 10. Sure. And so they agreed to 10. I wish it would have went 12 because as the fights kept going on and on, like Diaz mm -hmm. looked good, dude. That's the way. And it, dude, for a guy who is M an MMA fighter, for him to be able to hang like that from somebody's boxing, I mean, it just, I, I got more respect from Diaz from that. I don't think it was a good look for Paul as far as his, his boxing career he's doing right now. In fact, you can see, um, uh, what's his Nikisha? Nikisha is that his name? Nikisha, Nikisha. whatever. Nikisha, yeah. His partner, he's sitting like uh, ringside, like where the camera's at ninety percent of the time, like that seat that mm -hmm. you can see him the whole time or what like that. And you could see his facial expressions during the fight as the fight was going. Like I think they really expected like, him to knock him out within like four rounds, uh -oh. and that was the they needed the story That's to go that way. Out. And to see Diaz hang in there, goofing around, and still like hanging with this guy who's like he's, they're trying to make this case that he's a serious boxer. Mm -hmm, yeah. And he's and you know I think that was not a good look for him at all. Well, it wasn't so it was Tyson Fury he fought before that, right? Uh, uh, Tommy or Tommy, yeah. yeah Tyson. So that good. was like his first real yeah. like legit boxing match with a boxer. Yes, and, and he won people over with that. He but. did because and he lost, but he he took him the distance. He and everybody like he, he could fight. Oh, sure. oh, he could definitely yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Oh, yeah. I mean the 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 he's, knockouts he's really, that he's done yeah. with like Tyrone Woodley and like I mean those were like he put yeah. people to sleep. Dude, speaking of beatdowns, did you guys see the those immigrant business owners uh, beat down the dude stealing all the stuff yeah. from their convenience store? Did <laughs> yeah, you see that? I didn't no. See that. So it's this so street justice. Yeah, and by the way, they're probably going to get. It looks like they're going to get charged with assault or something like that. What? Yeah. No. So the clip shows uh, there are two Sikh uh, business owners, so immigrant business owners, and there's a dude wearing a ski mask or whatever, and he's just stealing shit behind yeah. the counter. And they're like, they now, the doing it. now there's more to the story. Apparently it's the third time. This guy, the same guy shoplifted them, okay? And they're he's taking it, and they're like telling him like to stop, whatever, he's not stopping. Guy filming is like, there's nothing you could do. Nothing you could do. He even asked the guy for a pack of, uh, so I don't know what, from the behind the counter, almost like he's like making he's a joke. He's taking out. like all the cigarettes. Yeah. Like, and he's the like, there's shelves. nothing you could do to the business owners. And so finally, the guy goes to leave. He's got literally, he's rolled in a garbage <laughs> can <laughs> yeah. and was scooping stuff in there. Yeah. He tries to get out. Super brazen. One of the business owners stops him. They start wrestling. One of the other ones grabs what looks like a big, long, I don't know if it's like a- It's a stick of some sort. looks like a shovel handle or something, yeah. big, thick stick, and just hits him, and the guy hits the ground, and then just starts beating the shadow. of him. Yeah. Whack. While he's on the ground. And, um, you know, I'm going to save my opinion as to whether or not that 
you know, he deserved it or not. I think this, you're going to see more of this kind of shit when the laws are going the way they are in some of these cities where yeah. I look San Francisco. I'm listen, my brother lived there and he's literally told me he was in a CVS and people walked in with garbage bags, scooped a bunch of shit in there. Nobody could stop them. Why? Because it, if it's under a certain dollar amount, they just yeah. let them go. They walked around the corner, put it out on the street and sold it to people. Yeah. They just literally walked in, took it. Nobody did anything. And everybody knows it's not right, but there's this weird idea that, oh, well, we don't want to, um, you know, this is their, the only way that they can make money. There's all these weird justifications don't for Don't you have it. insurance? Yeah, and they don't want to be super hard. But the thing about these laws, it, it protects everybody. Yes. And, and the business owners have been getting the fucking shaft, you know, since the very beginning of like the pandemic and everything. So it's like, inevitably, if you allow these things to persist, it's, You're gonna get they're going to take it in their own hands. That's it. And, and more, like you said, more of this is going to happen. It's going to be ugly and unnecessary. Especially- Immigrants, these people came, these immigrants who come here and who, who they, they, it's hard. They didn't come here because, uh, oftentimes because, uh, you know, whatever they came here because it was a better opportunity. They left their homeland where they spoke the right language. They came here. They don't speak the language. They build a business like a convenience store, which means they probably scraped a bunch of money together with their families, yeah. open it up land of opportunity, here we go. And then the laws don't even protect them and people are stealing their shit. They're going to fight you. Yeah. Like they're going to, you're going to get more shit like this if you don't pass some laws that make some sense. By the way, have you guys seen what some businesses are doing because of those laws? I don't remember what the amount was. but in, Oh yeah, I saw that where it's like they- In San Francisco, it's like if it's under 900 something dollars, then basically it's not a big like deal. They, they put it like the price like way over, but then when you come up, you get like a code or something like that. For a Everything discount. in the store is a thousand dollars or more. It's like $900 off. But yeah, when you yeah. bring it up to the front, there's a coupon code that they use a discount. That way, if you steal it, they could charge you with- you know, and I don't know if that works, but I think that's a smart, it's a brilliant approach. Way to get around it, one way to handle it. I know, but I feel, I feel, it makes me so yeah, angry. It's, it's like it's just these brazen. This is, I'm criminals. assuming, this is California. I don't know where it is. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't oh, know. It might oh. be New York. I'm not sure. Yeah, and there's like there's some places in the Midwest you've seen, you know, and even Chicago's like really gone downhill from when I've been there, and you know, Minneapolis, and so yeah, you've seen this like in in other cities that have just decided that they're not going to. be be quite as strict with their uh you know enforcement of these laws and yeah it's just it's backfiring no theft property damage and hurting people should be the top those should be the the most punished crimes yeah those should be the biggest i mean punishment. i've always thought it was crazy though i don't know what that what the laws were, were like somebody breaks into a house in california that like you could get in trouble for shooting a, them yeah i know that's crazy i know that's so wild to uh, me. It doesn't, I know, it doesn't make any sense. I know I had a friend. That, that has to be, to me, that has to be one of the most scary, threatening things to, that could ever happen. You see a me. random man yes. in your house, your kids are in bed, your wife's That's in bed. That's a threat to your life. Yeah. Like, so, I don't care if he's caring or not caring. Like, yeah, you, you, you're going to wait to see if yeah, he's yeah, caring? Yeah, yeah, I would never take that chance. Yeah. Like, People watch too many movies. Oh, you're going to pull out your gun faster. You know it's terrifying that would be to wake up yeah, in the yeah. night with some random dude yeah. in your house? Armed or not armed does not matter because you don't know. No. Yeah, that's crazy to me that I don't have the right at that point to like to protect my family yeah that's, that's the law should be like this if you go inside someone's house and they feel threatened by you it's on you and if they defend themselves because they're scared yeah. well then that's that's how it is yeah that's their prerogative yeah not, i know there's actually people who have sued uh homeowners because they broke into their house and would like and they like cut like themselves on themselves a, yes <laughs> have you heard of those cases? yes i have i don't know if they won or not is, it's California. It was Stockton. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> is that where it was? Newsom. Stockton, California? Elect Gavin Newsom, everybody. Yeah, He'll make the world yep. that way. Or America <laughs> yeah. that way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's so terrible. Yeah. Anyway, I did I I I did a Viore test uh earlier this week. I want to tell you guys about a Viore test? Yeah. What do you mean? So uh some people were messaging me and said because I talk about we always talk about their clothes. Obviously, we're working them for a while and um with them. And I like to wear their slacks. These are like nice slacks. Like right? you could wear these you know, to, to work or to go out or whatever, but they're really stretchy. So I worked out in them 
And uh, they're great workout pants too. <laughs> they yeah. stretch and I can squat. I squat mean, that's why all the time. deadlift. I drove people the people give me grief. They're like I'm wearing the tan ones. Like I'm wearing khakis, and they're like, "You're squatting in khakis? Like, yeah, no. That's such a dad move." No, yeah, like, no. dude, these if, are comfortable. If Justin doesn't blow the back out, you know those things <laughs> got some yeah. strength. They got some stretchiness. serious strength in those fibers. I mean, I wouldn't. I, it's so hard because they they're technically athleisure wear, right? That's yeah. the category that by the which didn't exist what 15 years ago or whatever. So they're this athleisure wear. Um, so they are more, they're more athletic clothes than they would be considered dress clothes. They just happen to be done and made so nice that you could throw a polo shirt like you're doing right now. And now all of a sudden it looks like you're dressed up. That's what's kind of cool about it is like they're really athletic clothes first. And then because they look sharp enough, yeah. you could dress them up, you know? Dude, I got to bring someone up real quick here. Uh, I don't I don't know if we gave this guy a shout out, but we'll watch this video and then maybe Doug, you see if we didn't get him and we'll make, oh, this will be a shout out and extra if that's the case. But I sent you the link in the text, uh, in the group uh, thread, Doug. You've showed us this guy before, Justin. Uh, his name, okay. is, his name is, and I've seen him before. Uh, his name is uh, Tom. I think uh, Haviland. Let me see. He, well, we already showed this guy out. The guy. Did we uh, shout him out? Yeah, I shouted this guy out. Okay. This is a guy who you Bro, never see his face. He's so strong. Yeah, you never see his oh, face. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! He's this. He is like a a real world superhero he is <laughs> he's bench pressing in this now he now remember is. he deadlifts insane amounts of weight long arms tall guy okay yeah. in this video he's bench pressing with a pause 617 pounds dude no there's no bench shirt bro that looks like he came home from work then he's yeah, he he's he's like, rows, four boots. plates like that's a, okay so my favorite part he's the ultimate gangster in my opinion my, my favorite part about this guy is this the mysterious like you don't know who he yes. is like, you can find it's like batman dude you You're can like, actually oh look him up God, and, and, and read about him i think he was a uh, special forces or something okay. like that yeah oh anyway. is that what he was yeah yeah, and he's, he's just like ridiculously strong. Yeah, dude, this is the kind of <laughs> this is the kind of human. That, <laughs> Imagine like breaking into his house. No, <laughs> a six hundred and seventeen pound bench press with a pause, and he's not like clean power, too. Clean. He's clean. not like powerlifting like technique or. It's like a, just a bench press. No, he, I'm yeah. just gonna lift heavy things, dude. And then he does, and it's a mind boggling. And he's not like a doesn't not built like a you know the power lifters a bench a lot like real round with a short arm. No, no, just he looks like a tall. He's like a tall dude, and he just crushes. There, that's a picture of him. Look how jacked. Is he, oh, is that him? Yeah. Oh, oh so wow. that's a that's the first time I've seen him, oh, bro. Uh, why does he look like like he's a real superhero? He's like an action. He looks more like hero. Thor than than what's his name does. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the first time I've actually seen his face. I so I see him. He's got the flag for jail. How strong is he connected to those guys? I don't know. Do you know if, he, if they're uh, affiliated or something? I have no idea. But I think he was special forces. Maybe Doug can find out, or when you guys can find out. I don't know. But he looks younger than what I thought he was. I thought he was older. I definitely like the mystery around it. You know, it's cool that he's like <laughs> he doesn't put anything put out the, there. He's not hyping himself up. He's just like, look what I can do. And you're just like, holy shit! Uh, he's oh, a, shit. Whoa, whoa, he's six, six eight. He's six eight, dude. He's a dude. giant. No way. Even more impressive. Oh my god! Hold on. He's six eight power lifter. Okay, so he was a power lifter. I, I, <laughs> I'm making up things. Yeah, you're like, he's, oh, you know he's saved. never power yeah, lifter. He just he, lifts. You know he, you know he punched a comment into the <laughs> and saved the earth. <laughs> this is how shit starts. Yeah. I know you all because he's like. I, face I heard he you pulled know Excalibur out of the uh, yes, stone. And, <laughs> bro, what, hey, you know what sucks? There's people in the world that li that are like that. Could you imagine if this was like fifty thousand years ago, and you're with your tribe, and yeah. then he shows up and he's like, uh, "Give me your food." Yeah. And uh, I'm going to take your girls. Yeah. Like, fuck. Like, well, I guess yeah. it's. Uh, Let me have a talk with my wife. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honey. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I, mean, I, think he I, think, I think he changed his uh, yeah. Instagram handle because I, we shot, I shouted him out uh, a long while ago when I shouted him out. Justin had already known who he was. So it's Tom underscore. But I think Ava he's. Land? Yeah. I think he's changed his. I think it was called something else before when he. when he. Uh, but yeah, I follow. Look him up. He's one of the strongest humans I've ever seen. Dude, yeah. I didn't know he was six, eight, too. I yeah. mean, no, that's even crazier, dude. <laughs> That's a big boy. Scary. I have a, a shout out that you guys will like that uh, I sent over. Um, I think I sent it over the, the clip to you, but somebody made a painting of the girl, the, the viral girl oh, on the plane who says, he's not real. He's yeah. not real. Yeah. 
and it's it's great. It's a it's a painting of her like pointing, saying that, and then you look back at the plane, and there's like a, a unicorn, super <laughs> like leprechaun, yeah, yeah. Bigfoots, in yeah, the back dude, and aliens. So cool. So the uh, the guy's na- the guy's name is Travis Chapman, and so his Instagram handle is Travis underscore Chapman underscore artist, I believe. Uh, right? Is that right, Doug? That's correct. Yeah. So I actually bought the painting, so I don't know where I'm going to put awesome. it. I don't know where I'm going to put it I yet. Go in here. I feel like it should go in here. Dude. I feel like it's it too, too but I feel like I don't know where. Uh, I'll where it's gonna it fit, yeah. but it, be, it would be just inside. Would make the most sense. <laughs> no, I don't way. know. No, I mean, yeah, you're the, I you're the conspiracy. It. You're known as the conspiracy. It's true. Person. I mean, I, I'll, I just I'll rock it. I'll, I just I, I I thought it was super clever, and you know, I would have loved to get my hands on the original, but I got like a, at least a print of it. So I don't know who got. I forget who he said. I actually talked to the artist afterwards. He said somebody bought the original already, but super clever and smart. Uh-huh. Haya Health makes vitamins for children. They're not gummy candies. They're not full of sugar. And they have adequate amounts of the nutrients that children need. So if you're looking to give your kid a vitamin supplement, go with Haya Health. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Michelle from California. Hey, Michelle. How can we help you? Hey guys, thank you so much for taking my question. And of course, thank you for all the content you put out there. Um, yeah, I'm calling today because mainly my question is about strength. So I've been an athlete my whole life. I played about five sports in high school. I played college ball for a little bit for softball. Um, and I've strength trained for a very long time, but I find that I can't barbell spot very heavy like i'll see other girls at the gym who can put on a lot more weight um i did used to compete so i did bodybuilding in which we stopped squatting and conventional deadlifting for fear of like building the black back um thickening the back which is a common belief in the bodybuilding space um so i recently quit just earlier this year and so i really want to get into strength training, but I get really frustrated, especially with the squat that I don't feel like I can lift that much. But the interesting thing is I can lunge with a barbell, my body weight without really any problems. But when I put the barbell with my body weight for a squat, I have more trouble. Do you Mm. think that like how, if you were to say like consistently, how long have you been squatting for? And the reason why I'm asking this is, and you've probably heard us talk about how much squatting is a skill, right? So like I I squatted for, I don't know, 10, 15 years of my life, the first five to eight of it really inconsistently. Um, it was always really bad at it. Uh, I don't think I really started to get good at squatting until like, let's say the last six or seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, a, and a lot of that is just uh, my mobility. So I didn't have the uh, a really good range of motion. I didn't have good me- squat mechanics. And it is a skill. Uh, and so if it's something that you haven't practiced consistently for an extent of it, you'd be surprised uh, how many people struggle with mm-hmm. getting really strong in it just because it, it's just an unfamiliar movement compared to other things like, let's say, lunging, like maybe you've been doing your whole life and you're very comfortable, very confident. In, and so uh, would you say you squat as much as you've lunged your entire lifting career? Probably not because I competed for three years and didn't squat. I mean, yeah. I did like hack squats and like presses, but I didn't do like barbell yeah. squats, but I still did reverse lunges. I still did Bulgarian splits. So that makes, that makes sense. Plus I feel like my early career, like when I was in like high school and college ball, when I did squat, I was squatting, like I've looked back at videos and I was barely re- reaching like 90 degrees. So I wasn't really going probably in, in that full range of motion until I started listening to you guys. Um, oh, you're, you're very simple. What you're, you're, you're speaking to very similar to what was going on with me. That was me. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't squat that often. Even when I did, I didn't have really great range of motion. And I'm actually looking at your barbell squat. You said you, you can do 125 for three and 135 pounds, at least for one. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's not bad yeah. at all. Yeah. You said you could, you could lunge your body. How much do you weigh? I weigh about 135. So you mm-hmm. can lunge with 135? Yeah, yeah, that's really good. What's the what's the problem? Like, what's the issue? Why why are you concerned with this particular number uh, so much? First off, we know you. I've met you before. I think you're a coach, right? For okay, so you're very fit. Uh, obviously, you know what you're doing with exercise. You've got great lifts across the board. 
So my question is, why why is this an issue for you? You, you? you mentioned comparing yourself to other people. Like, what's going on? I think just I'm facing the challenges that come post-competition. I was competing for three years. My goal was always to be an IFB pro, but I that took a big hit to my physical and mental health, which is why yeah. I took a step off. And so I think I always had that to like, grind and chase and so now that I'm not competing I need something to like strive for you know and I feel like I feel like the the big lifts trying to strive for um you know what those what those numbers I can't think about off the top of my head but it's like one is it one and a half for squat or one one and a quarter like I want to try to reach that I want to reach one and a half for deadlifts and bench press I want to try to get close to my body weight but that's the challenge yeah, you're, you're, um, so two things. One, uh, I, you, you know, I, I see what the challenge is. Training specifically for strength for those things is different than bodybuilding training. This would be more like a powerlifting type routine. So I would say if that's what you want to do because you, you're kind of interested in getting stronger in those lifts, train like a powerlifter and you will get stronger um, at those lifts. But the other thing I want to say is you're, you're doing amazing. I mean, in your question, when you wrote to us, it says, I look strong, but I feel weak uh, AF, weak as fuck. <laughs> so when I, when I hear something like that, I know that there's a, there's a bit of a challenge with the connection to your performance. Sometimes it has to do with connection to how you look. Um, and you might be training one challenge for another in the sense that, you know, competing on stage, it's about body image. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, uh, now I'm not doing that. Let me take this and, and move it in another maybe not so great direction, maybe a little better. Uh, but I mean, look, the answer for the specific question is actually easy, which is train like a power lifter. Stop mm -hmm. training like a bodybuilder yeah, and, and you practice, will. Practice the squat more, right? Yeah, yeah you will more, get more like- More frequency yeah. uh, over everything else. Do, do you have Mavs power lift? I do not. Oh, dude, follow that. Yeah. You're going to get your, those numbers are going to go up through the roof. Yeah, and I don't sure. think I don't think this is a bad shift. You know, you just have to recognize how big of a shift that is, and and I, I think people don't realize how different, um, you know, those types of of workouts are and your pursuits of of shaping and sculpting and molding your body versus now just focusing on strength and overall uh, performance of that strength. And so this just it's a totally different shift of mindset. It's a different way that you're gonna you know go into each lift and approach it. Uh, so to, to be able to really get into the nuance of all of the, um, uh, the, the technique, especially with these big lifts, um, you know, the squat in, in itself, uh, there's going to present itself like certain challenges, whether it's like ankle mobility or whether it's hips or, um, you know, just being able to brace even more effectively or get in that, you know, good position. So, you know, work your way through all of that and then power lift will help you kind of highlight, um, you know, how to, to really like, uh, pragmatically go through and, and add all that frequency and practice that you're going to need. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's no problem with the strength that you have. When I look at you listed your numbers yeah. and they're really good, Michelle, like they're really, really good. You're strong, you're fit. But if you're like, Hey, I just want to pursue this goal. I think it's going to be kind of fun. Just train like a power lifter. It's a very different mentality. So you're not getting a pump. You're not getting a burn. It's not about the muscles that you're working. It's more about the movement and the technique and the leverage. It's a very, very big shift in mentality. But once you're once you get there, it, it gets real fun. It gets really, really fun because it's different and it's different from what you've been doing. Um, so I think it would be great for you to follow a powerlifting routine. And don't be surprised if your squat goes from 125 to like 185 or 195. I mean, you're going to see some big gains in some of those lifts if you train specifically to lift more weight and not to like get a pump and burn and all that other yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think that's the thing too, is I've trained so much of my life in that eight to 12 rep range um, and even higher in that rep range for bodybuilding close to competition. So I haven't really spent that much time in that low rep range. Uh, I'm doing MAPS performance phase one right now. And I like that it has the mobility because I think that is important for being able to get that full range of motion. Um, for power lift, does it have a mobility component or would I pair that with prime or prime pro? 
it, I, it does have some yeah, primers some, in there. But I would take what you yeah. are liking from, this is what we always, and you know this, you've yeah, been listening to us for a long it. time, is I would take what you're finding in performance, the mobility sessions that you're getting a lot of benefit from, and I would cr I would put that in power yeah. lift yeah. specifically to Ritualize you. Ritualize right? it. Yeah, make that just like, if, you're, if there's a couple moves that you're doing <clears> and you're like, oh, wow, every time I do that, I feel... I'm getting better range in my squad. I just feel better the way I'm moving. Like, I mean, don't ever stop that. That's the idea is that we take people through that program and they make that connection of, oh, wow, when I make when I make time for this mobility work, it makes a big difference on my lifts. Keep that in there. Here's just, the other Here's the other side too uh, is uh, if you're maintaining too lean of a body fat percentage or you're not uh, eating in a surplus, it's going to be really hard to get strong. Coming mm -hmm. from your background, I'm going to assume – that that's probably a challenge for you, that you, you probably have a challenge allowing your body fat to creep up a little bit or eat in a, in a surplus, but that's going to be key to this as well. I mean, you'll get stronger by training like a power lifter just because your technique and skill will get better at the lifts, but you're not going to see big numbers uh, unless you 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 know you increase the calories and, and go into surplus. So you got to do that as well. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Well, cool. This is this will be easy, Michelle, I promise yeah. you. Yeah. Follow MAPS Power Lift, eat in a surplus, after Maps Power Lift, let us know where you're at. I think you'll be your body's gonna benefit. Surprised, a lot that, yeah. yeah, how strong you are. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll I'll update you guys on the uh, form. Awesome. Sweet. All Thank right, you so much for calling in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. It's just a different uh, mentality. I mean, totally. when you when you train, yeah. when you're used to the pump and the burn, yeah. going in and doing a set of two or three, resting for three to four minutes, it almost feels like you're not working out. I've heard yeah. people say that. It, it almost like you get insecure because it's yeah. so different. You know, you're like, well, am I doing this wrong? Yeah. And I just feel like there's a little bit of that. And like her numbers aren't aren't bad, but it's just like one of those things where if if that stands out to you, you just hyper focus on that. You can't help it, you know? Yeah. I mean, this whole question was mental, yeah. right? I mean, her her thinking that she's weak as fuck is off, yeah, first off. of all. I mean, when I, when I looked at her numbers, I, I didn't look at her numbers until we were talking for a minute. Then I see Doug scroll down. I'm like, oh, shit. Like. Yeah. She's not weak. No, she's, doing, she's, doing <laughs> she's, great. she's far from weak. And she's already admitted she's she took more than three years off of squatting completely to during competing world before. Have you guys that. ever taken like a I, good I, two years or so off oh, of like I, one of those major lifts? Yeah. I did with, with bench and it was drastic how how uh, you know much I had skill. to work to get it back. Yeah, yeah. skill. Especially squatting. Yeah. I mean, squatting is a is a major, major skill. I mean, I, I and she's been with us for a long time. I didn't <clears throat> can make the connection until you said something, Sal. I remember meeting her at one of the first live events, mm -hmm, like yep. the Viore event. She's been to a couple of them. Yeah. So she was she's been around for a long time. And I posted a, a a clip or a picture I don't remember <clears throat> of my squat at the beginning of like bodybuilding time, and it was like you remember that like yeah. a, a big old wide stance. I can't break ninety degrees. I couldn't load the bar more than like two twenty five, two seventy five on there. Like huge difference. Yeah. And I just I just didn't squat frequently, and I didn't have the mobility and the the focus on the mobility and the increase in frequency on practicing that movement. You know, it took some time, man. It took some time before I really saw those numbers jump up. But someone coming from her background, one of the things that she's going to love is if you never really got good at it. I mean, the things that I love from it now the the leg and glute development with a very little leg training I have to do today to have better developed legs than what I did as a bodybuilder you know, leg pressing and hack squatting and leg extensions all day long. Like, so once you get good at this movement, the benefits from it are incredible. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would expect, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she got 30 to 50 pounds on her squat. Oh, yeah. Well, especially power if power she power. takes the nutrition advice yep. that you said. Yep. I'm sure. Our next caller is Darren from Toronto. Darren, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hi guys. How are you today? It's a, it's a pleasure talking to you guys. It's cool. wide watching your podcast for, uh, for a good while now. And, actually really excited to be on here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome, man. Um, so my question uh, for you guys is, um, is for me is like working out, become an obsession for me. Um, so usually I work out four to five days a week. Um, but prior to that, to give you guys a little background story, um, I kind of use um, like workout as more like a therapy for me. So in the past, you know, as a, as, um, as a young, very young teenager, I was, um, molested by, um, by a family friend. And from there I've had, um, as well, cancer running with my family, with my mom, with my grandfather, um, with my dad, who I recently just passed. And going from that, 
I've always used workout as or working out as my way of therapy. Um, in that time of when I work out, um, I've had a steel plate put in my ankle. I've had um, my knee fixed with a torn meniscus as well. I had a hernia fixed because I think I take working out a little bit way too much. And it becomes, um, like I said, um, like a therapy for me. So I just wanted to know if, in your opinion, do you think I'm doing too much using that as a therapy to deal with everything and can working out, can I slow it down on my part? Let's, let's first celebrate the decision that you made first. I think that somebody who's been through what you've been through and, and continued to go through a lot of shit and you chose to exercise and improve yourself as your outlet instead of abusing yourself or drugs or hurting somebody yeah, else yourself. Yeah. I think that's a huge fucking win. <clears throat> so first that's first and foremost. So I think having some empathy for yourself, even if you have used exercises and outlet like that. And I think you're already in, in moving in the right direction because you have the self-awareness that you're, you're kind of using it that way. So <clears throat> I, I think that, that that's important to recognize that because you tell somebody like you like, Oh yeah, you're definitely abusing exercise. And you're like, fuck, well, then what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Because I still see all these things that you just mentioned before you said that. These are areas in your life that uh, you're, you're probably going to be working on for quite some time. I mean, I can completely, I, can, I can't relate to everything that you said, but I can relate to some of the stuff that you said. And this will be something that you'll, you'll continually have to work on. And I think that exercise can be a vehicle to help that. It also can be something that you uh, abuse. And I guess the, the, the thing that I would say to start with is when you find yourself in these moments when you're running away from those things, like, cause you don't want to feel it or you don't want to think about it and you're going to the gym is to, maybe that's a time that you, you reach out either to somebody who you trust that's that you can talk to, or you, you maybe invest in a therapy where you can, you can talk about what you're going through while you're <clears> using <throat> this exercise. And that will start to help. I don't think that, uh, I don't think this is going to be an overnight thing that you just switch off. Yeah. Exercise uh, and fitness are extremely powerful tools. It's a double-edged sword. It can be <clears throat> massively beneficial uh, as a therapeutic tool. It can also be abused like any drug. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, which one uh, are you or how are you using it? Do you find the therapeutic effect when you go to the gym and beat the crap out of yourself where you can barely move and you survive the workout, you're crawling out, you go home, you got to lay down on the couch. Uh, if, if that's where you're getting the, the therapeutic benefit, then you may just be enjoying the self punishment aspect of the workout. So not unlike other ways people hurt themselves where maybe they do things to themselves cause they, they need to feel, let's say they're numb so they do things to themselves so they could feel something. So like, you know, you'll see kids will cut themselves as an example of that. Or it could be self-punishment because I deserve to be in pain and hurt myself. It could be a distraction when I'm working out so hard that I can't breathe and I can't think about all that scary stuff. Then it gives me a break. I feel good because I can't think of all that negative shit. Those are all uh, those are all unhealthy relationships of exercise and the result of which is injury overtraining. And then what'll happen, Darren, if you do that is you'll lose exercise as a tool because at some point you won't be able to anymore. So now let's, let's talk about exercise as a therapy. Exercise as a therapy doesn't distract. It brings things to the surface. It doesn't punish. It cares for it doesn't hurt you so that you feel it improves your ability to feel everything else. That's the therapeutic effects of exercise if used properly. You know, in your question, you asked if you could work out every day. You can. You just have to modify the intensity and approach the exercise session as a way to take care of yourself. That's it. How can I take care of myself? Sometimes you have to separate yourself from the situation. Um, Darren, who, who in your life do you care the most about? Do you have children? Do you have a wife or a family member, I, a friend? I, I have my, um, uh, my fiance, um, okay. which I really do care a lot about. Um, recently, um, it was my father. So my father was the one that introduced me into uh, weightlifting. He, 
he pretty much didn't know anything about it. But during this time when I was um, as a young kid and trying to figure out, like after everything that's happened with me, he's the one that introduced me, you know, let's just try going to a gym. So he brought, he came to me with a gym. He had no training experience whatsoever, but he brought me there and he was making me lift weights. He was doing things with me that I was like, okay, I'm asking, do you even know what you're trying to do? (laughs) And, and, you know, it, it started from there. That was the first step. And he encouraged me to keep going with that. And, you know, even when he was sick, he was always asking me, you know, like, make sure you still have those big arms, make sure you have that big chest, you know, just make sure you keep continue being strong. So he was that one person that I, you know, like that role model that, that I really cared for. And he pushed me like, he was like that Mickey to that, my Rocky. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. It was, a, yeah, it, it's, it, it would have been him if, yes, if he was still around, but as of right now, it would like the people I care for that I know that, pushed me in that direction. My mom, my brothers, and of course my fiance that have that support. And, you know, it's when I, when I work out and, you know, when I do push myself, it's more to the point where, um, I, after I'm done, I feel like I am lifted. I am, I feel like I am more powerful than I was before I started the workout. Um, I have a lot of ideas that go through my mind during those workouts that are more positive. But, and I, it's one of those things where I don't want it, where if I keep doing stuff, even though I know um, you just said how you do your workouts where you don't have to go with the full intensity, but just doing something um, and that is, is more than nothing. And I think that's where I was getting more confused as if I keep doing something, even if it's a little or not, does that become too much? No. I mean, if you, mon- if you monitor the intensity, mm-hmm. you can exercise every single day. If the intensity okay. is appropriate. You know, what, the reason why I ask you that question is uh, sometimes when you go to the gym, say, okay, how would I train my fiance if she were me right now? And then you're, you you might make better decisions because it, it's easier for us to care for other people than it is to care for uh, ourselves. That's why I asked you that. So, but yeah, yeah. you can work out every day if you monitor uh, the intensity appropriately. You know, you mentioned feeling powerful. Uh, you also want to be careful with uh, with that. In the sense that if you, if your fear is feeling weak, uh, then you're you, you're eventually going to go down a dark path with exercise, because at mm-hmm. some point you get older or you get injured or you get sick, and then you lose your identity. Who am I? You know, I'm not as strong as I was before. Um, you know, what is this? What does this mean for me? So the feeling powerful, maybe make that less about how strong you are. Uh, and more about the fact that you show up and that you're resilient. That's that's real power. These the empowerment aspect of it. So it's like, oh, I got this, you know, I got this injury, and I can't lift like I used to, but I'm doing something. That's empowering. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Versus, I can't bench as much as I did before, and then you start to kind of push it too hard or freak out because what does that mean? Now you're young and you might not encounter this yet, but at some point you will. And that'll mm-hmm. be, you know, a bit of a challenge. But uh, like I said, you can do this every single day. You just have to modify the intensity of the workouts, um, in which case every day is perfectly fine. Do you, have, Darren, do you have uh, MAPS performance? I do not. And I was, um, I've been looking at different programs and always kind of uh, conflicted on which one to get, which would help me. But no, MAPS performance, I do not have. I want I want Doug to send you maps performance, and the reason why is that you seem like somebody who probably strength trains and you like to lift heavy and do so like that it's a it's a different type of training. You're you're more focused on the movements. Mm-hmm. It has mobility days that are in there, and so what I'm hoping that you get from maps performance is the mobility routines, the the unconventional lifts that are in there, and that when you're in these days where you know your body's kind of beat up a little bit and you're and you're asking yourself the question that Sal said, how would I train my fiance right now? And you go, oh, today's probably a day I wouldn't hammer squats and deadlifts. Today's probably a day I should do that mobility routine. You'll pull from this program. Yeah. And so that's that's an example of like how, because I, I loved it, I, especially during competing days, I trained seven days a week. I was in the gym because I loved the routine. I loved the consistency of I, at that time in my life, I was able to do this from between noon and two noon and two. I'm in the gym. You could guarantee I was in the gym at noon. Now what I was doing completely depended on my rest, my recovery, my diet, what was going on, how I felt my sleep. And so you just got to learn to do that and be honest with yourself 
when you're having those days when you're you're a little beat up or you've been pushing a little hard, hey, you know what? I'm going to do some mobility work today or I'm going to get on the treadmill and walk for an hour. Like those, that's still, you're still training, bro. You're still moving the needle in the right direction. In fact, you're moving it better than you would be if you were to go hammer yourself. So just learning how to train differently yeah. uh, when, when you know your body's talking to you. I especially like that advice because I know the propensity is when <clears throat> you're familiar with some of these bigger lifts and you're able to really load these lifts. And, and, um, it's, it's a really hard thing to just tell you, Hey, taper off the intensity a bit. Uh, especially if you're having thoughts and you're having sort of momentum in that direction of, you know, like I'm, I'm just going to, you know, get after it because, uh, you're, you're feeling things, um, to, to be able to shift that over into something that's, um, a little more technical, you know, uh, something that you're not really able to load a lot of weight, but it's very difficult, uh, benefits your body a lot. Um, you're you're sort of like filling needs that that your body has in terms of moving in other directions and uh, strengthening other parts of your body. I think it's a good way to refocus that so the intensity you can kind of manage and mitigate a little bit more. Okay, perfect. No, I I, I truly appreciate that. Thank you very much. You got it, man. Yeah, you yeah, do. We appreciate you calling in, yeah, yeah dude. Thank you. And one last thing I do want to say, I don't know if um, it said a lot to you guys, but me knowing that, um, like I watch you guys podcast all the time and I know all three of you are fathers and the stories that you guys share about your kids and everything um, with, with, uh, with having my father reminds me a lot of you three, like the stories that you guys share and everything. So as a son, I just hope like when your children grow up, they, they truly appreciate and love the support that you've given them because you guys are fantastic and I am sure that they will, but just please keep being who you guys are. Cause it's actually really inspiring. And I really, really love listening to you guys talk every day on different stories, topics, cause it's a good reminder of how there are a lot of good people out there and you guys show that every single day. So thank you very much. Oh, man. Well, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Darren. Darren. I appreciate so, that. Hope you guys have a good day. You too, man. Appreciate that easy. brother. I need, yeah. to, I need to hear that today. <clears throat> really? Yeah, I just feel like, uh, you know, sometimes when we do stuff, we did that, that fucking post the other day with the video games thing, and just so many people get triggered, and then all of a sudden you go, man, do everybody who listens to us, like, hate us? <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to get shifted in that mindset when you, when you get that, and you forget, like, there's a lot of people that... I think uh, understand the the position or the the message that we we give or what we're where we're trying to come from. You know, it's really easy to uh, get caught up in the the all the negative stuff that gets said. Sometimes, like man, yeah. I, I really hope that uh, people don't take <clears throat> that message that way. Well, what highlights to me is that there's not a lot of dads talking about being dads. You yeah. know, all of a sudden we're like, you guys are great examples. It's like we just talk about yeah regular stuff working through it you know it's crazy yeah, yeah. uh but yeah this uh this double-edged sword thing with exercise is interesting it could feel therapeutic to abuse yourself mm -hmm. uh for a while i mean this is how people use alcohol and drugs it's really no different so it's a challenge uh for some people to figure that out it's uh, really hard because it's something that's good for you that's why this is such potentially a, right yeah that's yeah. why this is such a challenge you know and for the audience that's listening that you know has probably heard us talk about this before i'm why i'm glad we get a caller like this to talk about this is because believe it or not he's he's more common than you would think now maybe his his story uh is is more extreme than what a lot of people have gone through um but a lot of people <sighs> do that they they move into exercise uh because of an insecurity uh because they don't want to think about something else and they start to and because it it shows these positive benefits right they get stronger they look better people start complimenting them and so then they start to begin to go oh this is this can't go wrong yeah there's no way i could do this yeah, yeah, more is always better right. Yeah, right and so and believe it or not there's a lot of people in our space that are that we prop up as great people to aspire to be like and that are in and, and, and you and a lot of people have no idea that a lot of those people are struggling with this type of stuff they've totally. just they've pushed it so far that they've now have this physique that looks so amazing that they get admired for on social media and so when you hear us talk about intensity and you hear us talk about balance and, and you know there's probably young guys that probably scoff at the stuff that we talk about but we're coming from a place of i've trained hundreds of people like this mm -hmm. i've trained a lot of people 
that are in, later in their life that are still battling these things like that. And exercise can be an incredible tool, but like any tool, it could also hurt you. Our next caller is Tracy from California. Hi, Tracy. How can we help you? Good, good morning. Um, I'm so excited to talk to the three of you. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys saw the precinct that I fell two years ago and I annihilated my ankle and broke my leg. <clears throat> and that. so I had four plates and like dozens of screws put into my ankle and my uh, leg. And I had that removed last year. So for two years, I've had, you know, lack of mobility and lost a lot of muscle on the left hand side of my body mainly my leg and i have a goal to get back into backpacking and hiking so i need to carry 30 to 40 pounds and hike 7 to 10 miles but i all yeah i have a lot of imbalance and so i'm curious how do i build that left leg up without neglecting the right leg who is super strong and doing all the work and how often do i you know use do the left leg do i go every day every other like i don't i'm lost at what to do at this point we got the perfect program for uh, yeah you. yeah it's yeah. almost map what, symmetry you figured that out yeah map symmetry is perfect for you it's a mostly unilateral unilateral meaning one arm one leg at a time workout program i want you to start with the leg that was previously injured meaning when you start the workout or the exercise do the the injured leg or the previously injured leg first and use that leg to dictate what to do with the right leg. So if you could only do five reps, only do five reps with the right leg, even if you feel like you could do more and you'll start to get them to catch up. When, lots of unilateral training is going to solve. How strong is it right now? Like, are you <coughs> pretty much fully recovered? You just need to like bring more focus there into the leg to kind of strengthen it up. Yes. I, um, I'm pretty, I'm fully recovered. I, I have a hard time standing on the left leg by itself. I don't have a lot of range of motion going down. Up is good, but down in my ankle, I can't do very well. Uh, if I do like a, a leg press on the leg press machine, mm -hmm. I got by the, the left leg by itself, I can do maybe 15 to 20 pounds pushing by itself. Whereas my right leg can do like 60 to 80 pounds by itself. So you can articulate your, your ankle pretty well now in terms of all ranges of motion? No, no. I may not get that back. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna. So here's two things. We're. I'm gonna send you Maps Prime Pro also. Yeah, so there's there, there's. Going. So in Maps Prime Pro, uh, we have some stuff for the ankle and foot. So I, I want you to take that out of there and it become like a daily routine for you. So and the, okay. And what's great about Maps Prime Pro? This is more for corrective work for somebody who's had an injury or has chronic pain. So this is not something that is like programmed like our other programs where it's like oh only do it this much. It's like do it as much as you can. So the exercises okay. that are in there for your foot and ankle, <clears throat> I want you to practice those and do those anytime you're in your house, living room floor, in your bedroom floor. Do it before you go to your workout. Just try and incorporate it into your life as much as possible. Sal's point that he's talking about with symmetry. So when, and we, by the way, we wrote this program thinking of a client like you, because believe it or not, even though maybe your injury is, is uncommon, people being in balance like this because of an injury is very common. And we would get this all the time. Mm -hmm. The hardest part is the mental part is that you're going to do these exercises, uh, where you start on the weaker side. And like you said about the leg press, you'll be dramatically different and you're going to feel like you're almost doing nothing on right. the strong side, but you are. You're still moving that that leg through range of motion. It's still being stimulated, so it's not going to lose any muscle. It's gonna it's gonna maintain where it's at, and we're gonna allow the other one to catch up. So don't get in your head where you're like, oh my god, I can do so much. This is so light for that leg. That's all right. Do the work. Mirror mirror the side that is weaker, and it will it'll come up. It'll 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 bring up. It'll it'll come up. And between that and doing the ankle stuff that Justin was working towards, alluding until I cut him off, that is where you want to put most of your energy and focus. Yeah. And, and really to be simple, like once we figure that out in terms of like some of those mobility moves for your ankle and for your feet and really kind of focusing, hyper-focusing on strengthening and, and regaining back some of that uh, dexterity, uh, that's something you're going to repeat every single day. So this is something that it's, it's not, you, you can't overdo it in terms of like repatterning and being able to regain function and strength. That's what's going to do, move the needle the most in terms of when you feel like your body is 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 strong and able again so it's really going to root down to that uh how how far we can get with that in terms of your your stability there uh around your ankle and supporting it <clears throat> in order to then go into our unilateral training so doing the unilateral training you can do uh in conjunction but again really hyper focus on 
building that ritual of, of, you know, one to two times a day of like five, 10 minutes of work on, you know, your feet, your, your ankle and all these mobility moves. How, how often are you hiking now? Are you at all? Um, just on the weekends, if I can get into it, luckily for me, the gym is a 10 minute walk. So I can just walk down to the gym and do all that exercising. And there's tons of hiking around here. I have not backpacked yet. I can hike seven miles, you know, wearing a day pack and my ankle, I stop halfway, roll, take off my shoes, roll my, you know, calf, blah, 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 massage. And I can do seven to 10 maybe tops, but I'm, I'm limping at the end. Okay. okay let, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. So the reason why that calf seizes up like that is back to the point that Justin's making. So because you have limited range of motion in the ankle and your feet are weak, the calf ends up taking over the work. So as you're walking, what's happening subconsciously is that calf is just having to work so much that it starts to knot up and lock up, and then you feel that you have to roll up. <clears throat> so this is why strengthening the ankle and the foot becomes a huge priority for us. I'm going to, I'm going to do one more. I, can't, I know I'm giving you all this free stuff, but I, I want to address this like, and how we would really take care of you as a client. If you were with us, I want to put you in the forum also our private forum where okay. uh, we can check up on your progress because here's how I would even customize like our programming is like anytime I did like an exercise, like let's say like a lunge with you, I would make you balance on that right, that weak, that weak ankle. So let, um, envision yourself doing like a standard lunge, but then I'd make you bring the other leg up and, and, I, and I would make you stabilize for like five seconds before we did the next rep. And then you'd lunge back up and then balance and stabilize all really trying to strengthen that, that ankle and that foot. I'd also encourage okay. you to walk around your house barefoot and try. I do that now. Okay, yeah. good, good. To be doing a lot of barefoot type of movements and anytime you can get a barefoot exercise in at home or do that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we want to, we want to get that foot, that the weak side where the injury was, we want to get that foot strong. We want to get that range of motion in the ankle. So even things that sound stupid, like sitting at home, you know, and just moving, uh, yeah. moving yeah. your Fred, ankle. Yeah, yeah. And, and challenging Articulate that. Articulate each toe individually. Yes. It's like, that's our goal. Our goal is to get to a place where you, it's going to be difficult to see the discrepancy between left and right with your ankle <sighs> mobility. And that is what's really going to help. And that's the reason why when you do these long walks or long things that like you feel it all in the calf, it's because the, the ankle and foot just, they're not strong enough yeah. yet. I want you to just follow map symmetry, skip the okay. last phase. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so don't do the last phase, go through it twice before going through it a third time. And then you can add the last phase. So two times through just the first few phases, skip the last phase one time, two times. And then the third time you can add the last phase do the Prime Pro ankle and foot mobility movements. Pick a couple of them that you do throughout the day, and you'll be totally set. Yep. And as far as hiking is concerned, Tracy, don't hike until you limp. Okay, here's why. If you hike until you limp, you're going you're gonna to continue to strengthen the imbalance. You're okay. going to continue to, to in, in, uh, encourage the imbalance between the two sides. Because by the time you're limping... Your, your other leg has already been doing yeah, a lot of yeah, work. Yeah, you're overcompensating. That's so rather than seven miles of hiking. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Do, it. do not go well within your limits because once you go beyond that, then the compensation happens and then you're going to continue to maintain that imbalance. Okay. <clears throat> there's uh, there's stuff um, in Prime Pro and, and what you're going to see, it's very important. The hardest thing to teach somebody who's who's got an issue like you is – you're going to go to a, a stretch or an exercise you're going to see in there and you're going to notice that your ankle can only go so far. And then, mm -hmm. but it, this is not like a relaxing. It should be kind of intense. So you're going to take it to its in range of motion. And then mentally you're Squeeze. trying to, you're, 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 you're straining to move it further. And, and what we're doing there is we're, 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 we're forcing the brain to fire more neurons in that area to get you to gain more access to more range of motion. If you just take it to where it, it's like, oh, that's as far as I can go, and you're like relaxed and comfortable, and you come out, we're not forcing the body to try and gain more. So it should feel kind of intense. And I think we did a good job of having Dr. Brink take us through the movements and you can hear us kind of straining through the exercises. You're, you're searching for that. I want you to okay. challenge yourself and you're each time you're trying to challenge a little bit more range of motion. And it's, it's very incremental. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of time before you start to see a difference, but it, it, it will, ha it will happen. Excellent. Yeah. Cause what happens now is I will do exercises at the gym. I started doing like um, dumbbell squats, et cetera. And, I am not super sore the next day or at the end of the day. 
And I don't know if it's in the, the, the weight is heavy for no. me. It's heavy, but I think my ankle gives out more than anything else. And my body can't push it farther. Tracy, That's don't. Okay. Soreness is a terrible indicator of yeah, workout yeah, yeah. Uh, effectiveness. So yeah. okay. not getting sore is better than getting really sore. Right. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you're if you're lifting weights consistently, you're doing all this work we're talking about. You're keeping your nutrition in yep. check. You you will see a body composition change. You'll be happy with your results. But our, my focus with you is the the foot and ankle. We got to get that. Okay. Yeah. So everything else will follow after that. Yes, I'm not yet off. Yeah. Yeah. We're, at, we're well, gonna put you. you. We're gonna put you in the forum too, Tracy. So keep us keep us up to date. I'd love to see how your progress is over the next you know thirty sixty days. Um, and by the way, we have Be people. Like, with it. We have people like Doctor Brink inside that forum who helped us write Maps Prime Pro. So we've got movement specialists in there in addition to our our knowledge to help support you. <clears throat> No, this is super exciting. I don't want to be a limpy old lady, right? I want to. <laughs> we don't, don't want to be. We don't want you to be yeah. either. So we got you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so so much. All right, Tracy. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Great, great, I've worked with. Uh, I had a client. Attitude. I had a client like that who had uh, shattered their ankle, and when they reconstructed it, they did have limited mobility, so we couldn't yeah. really do bilateral squats or at least not to a, a like a normal depth we just yeah. couldn't because the ankle was limited by the actual hardware sure they put in there so it was all unilateral stuff it was yeah. all and, and you know what by the end of the i mean i had trained this person for a couple of years yeah. they made such significant process pro progress you can almost not tell yeah uh that there was a that there well was a difference. you bring up a good point sal that you know it's okay if you never bilateral squat i mean the shit there's people that this is a real reason why like you mike Boyles and people like that that advocate for all unilateral work so you can build an incredible uh physique very strong uh by training unilateral forever uh mm -hmm. for that reason so if, but i definitely think you want to work towards trying to get to that place but it's okay if you don't if you do bulgarian split squats for the rest of your yeah. life instead you gotta of work with your body what your limitations are right. and just uh try to improve so yeah if she just keeps on that path she's gonna be just fine